record to, record to the cloud. Okay, I think we got it. Okay, so Paula, come back to the ground. Okay, uh, on Mondays we do team calls in Spanish. Yesterday, what we did is we did an opportunity call. So I basically presented. We had some guests on the call. So if you ever come across somebody that wants to learn about the business, about Zaya, the business, more like the rep, becoming a rep uh, in Spanish, now we have a recording. So all you have to do is ask, hey, where's the recording? If you want it, let me know, pass it around. You never know. You may have people that want to know more, but maybe they will prefer listening to it in Spanish. We have it, and it's with slides and the whole shebang, right, Mariuxi? I think we did, Tanya was there too. I know some of you were there. Luisa was there too. There you are. Andy was there. Yeah, hello, that's good. I gotta tell you, the, the, those of you that I see on the calls, and I, this is like, I see you, I see your commitment, I see you showing up, and it's showing, it's reflecting in the way that you're showing up. Take screenshot, take like pictures that you're on the calls. That's what sh sharing that is showing the behind the scenes of how you're working the business. And this is, I mean, not that it's related to what our guest speakers are sharing today, but it also has to do with it's those little things that maybe we think are that dumb, but at the same time, you guys. It's like pulling the curtain to the side and showing people what you're doing, showing people what, uh, do I need to smile? Okay, there you go, like freeze. <laughs> and here we, I know it's like, mm, hello. Picture first, Paula, shut up. Just let us take the picture first. Okay, so, um, oh, Tracy, I like that moon on your phone. That's very cute in the back of your phone. Yeah, very cute. So, um, okay, so where was I? I'm a squirrel today. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. So share the behind the scenes, how you work the business, right? Show your clothes, show how you set up your outfit of the day. How do you, like all those little things. And, um, but because we have so much to share, we have two amazing humans that I've had the pleasure to, uh, know in person, meet them in person, hug them, and just like they're just amazing. They're so fun. Hi, Riley. Look at the Diado family. Oh, we got everybody here. Where's Tyler? I love, <laughs> of course, video games. Mine too. So we're so excited that you guys are here. We'll try to not say any bad words. Remember, there are children in the house, and uh, we try to keep this PG. Oh, yeah, it'll be PG. Uh, we don't say bad words here. I don't. Do I say bad words? I don't. I don't even know bad words in English. Like, what? No, I don't even know them in English. Anyway, um, but we have two amazing guests. I love them. Alicia, where are you? Okay, so um, I'll introduce you both really quick, and then we'll have um, we'll have Julie start, Alicia. Yeah, we'll have Julie start. I know. I just volunteered you. I know. I know. I know. Um, so just because it, I, I gotta tell the story, you guys. I have to do, like typical pull up up in here. Okay. So I'm very excited to introduce you guys to Julie Vasquez, who is not Mexican. No, she's not. So last week. I'm not staring. This is just funny just because it's typical me. Last week, I said, I sent her a message. I sent Alicia a message. And I said, you guys, separately, would you be our guest speakers on next week calls, blah, blah, blah. And I said, Julie, would you be the guest speaker on the call on Monday? Wink, wink in Spanish, huh? Oh my God. And she's like, yeah, I'm so excited. Oh my God. I'm like, yes. I'm like, yes, this is so cool. I go, Tracy, Julie's going to be the speaker next Monday. She's like, you know, she doesn't speak Spanish. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? I feel like I've talked Spanish with her somewhere. She's like, maybe because of her name, but she's actually not Mexican or not. She doesn't speak Spanish. I'm like, what? I had a moment of shock. <laughs> So I had to share that with you guys. Little, you know, good old fashioned Paula, right? And Tracy popping my bubble. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you 
joking, Tracy? What do you mean she doesn't speak Spanish? Anyway, so no, our dear Julie knows some Spanish like cerveza and ventana, right? Gracias. So Julie, Julie, take it away. Julie is a, an executive rank uh, rep with Saya. She is, she is leading a team of 70 reps currently, right? And I'm pretty sure it's like growing by the minute. And she joined in October of 2018. So this is like your two year anniversary coming up this October. This is exciting. Okay, let's go, Julie, let's get started. And then we go ahead with Alicia. Yay. Yay, can you guys can you hear me okay? Okay, I'm echoing. I need to figure out how to not do that. Now? Is it? Okay, I can't hear myself at all. Um, <laughs> so let me know if you can't hear me. Um, okay, fine. I'll go first. I'm a little bit nervous, but considering I was supposed to go yesterday, I was so flattered. Um, when Paula asked me to talk on the Monday call, and I know that Monday is the Spanish call, but I was like, it's fine. Someone will translate. Like, I'm used to that. I mean, I grew up in San Diego, California. Um, my, what I do for work, we produce in Mexico. So I'm forever sitting on calls and I have no idea what's going on. So I actually didn't think twice about it. Um, but anyways, let's just jump right in. Please don't judge me. I'm like Paula and I lose uh, my train of thought all the time. I'm always off on a tangent. So I'll do my best to stay on track. Hi everyone. I'm so excited to see so many familiar faces. Um, all right, so some background about me. Like I said, I'm a San Diego, California native. Um, I'm a Navy brat. My, my dad and my stepdad are both in the military. I grew up with that. I feel like Paula's warning about profanity was probably for me because I, um, I grew up with sailors. So that's, that's me, but I will do my absolute best. Um, I played team sports growing up. I played um, eight seasons of fast pitch softball. And then when I got into high school, I did nothing my first two years of college. And my mom was like, if you want to get into college, you better do something and get involved. So she told me to go on a drama. I thought that was awful. So I went into cheerleading. So um, I did competitive cheerleading for two years. We were on ESPN. It's just like cheer on Netflix. It was so much fun. The time of my life, the most painful also time of my life. Um, but that's also how I met my sponsor. So let's see, fast forward out of high school. I got married to another sailor when I was 19 years old. That was not the brightest choice, but now that we're older, older I think we all agree that was a bad decision. Um, and then I got divorced when I was 23. So um, I'll come back to that. But anyways, um, I survived that. I went to school, I studied psychology, I earned my master's degree. And then my life goal when I grew up was that I wanted to have a federal job. I wanted to work with the government and I wanted to be like a profiler or somebody like that. And I happened to finish grad school in 2011 when the government was having shutdowns. So there were no jobs. Um, I was no longer a military spouse. I am not a military veteran. Therefore, I was like fourth or whatever on the list for people to get hired. There was no way it was gonna happen for me. I was burnt. So I just went out and got a job and I wanted to have fun. So I went to be a bartender and that was really fun for five seconds. And then it was like, what am I doing? I have all this student debt and I'm not using my degree, whatever. So I figured you got to give up to go up a little bit. So I'm just going to get the first job I can get. I don't even know how I fell into construction, um, but I was hired as like an admin in accounting. Um, no accounting background, but I can balance a checkbook. Um, and um, so I fell into construction. And then let's see, nine years later, I've moved to my third company. I'm now, um, I've climbed the ladder. I am a female um, in construction. I'm a project manager. I happen to work for a smaller company. Therefore, I also function as a um, kind of like the vice president. So 35 years old, and I feel like I've kind of maybe accomplished something big in the construction world. Um, 
so I learned a lot and I will say that's helped me kind of have thicker skin and certainly like defend myself in certain situations. Um, but anyways, so moving on, random fact, I am not actually Mexican. I'm, uh, despite my Spanish last name, I'm Filipina. So, uh, my mom, family is from France. We, we are in the, anyways, I'll save you the details. Um, but anyways, my mom's family is from France. My dad is born in the Philippines. So, um, with that said, I also don't speak karaoke. <laughs> so, um, some questions that Paula asked me to answer. The first one is what are some things that I've overcome in the past? And the biggest thing that I want to share with you guys for me, that's a personal struggle struggle is overcoming and accepting failure. So you never think how much that impacts you, I think, until I realize like all the things that I've struggled with and looking back and it's like, I'm just not good at not being good. Um, and I wouldn't say that that's like, I was raised a certain way or whatever. It's just that like, I think I have such a high expectation of myself. So to fail is terrifying. So, I mean, looking back, um, I was divorced at 23. So to accept at such a young age that like this dream that we all want was a failure. Um, I'm 23 and it's not working for me. Like, what am I going to do? Functionally, I didn't have adequate coping skills to even deal with that. Um, and then, you know, after that, you just, I found myself falling into other failed and abusive relationships, accepting the fact that I have still never used my degree. However, I will say it does come in handy sometimes with sales. Um, and then, you know, when it came to business, I was like, okay, I'm going to step into this thing and then I'm going to have a killer launch party and then I'm going to have no sales at all. And like, where did everybody go? Why aren't they supporting me anymore? What am I doing wrong? Um, even my family, why aren't they showing up for me anymore? Um, so learning from that as well. And then when I became a leader, which I never intended to do, um, failing my team, failing at onboarding my new reps, failing at leading. Um, so, okay. And then one more thing I wanted to share. If you guys listen to like Gary V and those other like social media guys, they always talk about like, make sure in all your posts, you add content, add content, add content, add value. What does that mean? I'm not a social media expert. I think I'm like on the top end of like being a millennial. So I don't even know what that part means. And so finally figuring out like, what is it that I add to people? Like, why do you keep coming back to my socials? Why do people like my pictures? Um, and I think what it is, is that I'm funny. So in also learning, I think that I'm funny at least, um, in learning why I think my sales slumped is I tried to be too salesy. So when I got back to like, just being me, um, presenting the clothes in a way that I wanted to explain them, um, posting the things that I thought was funny. Sometimes it's like, you know, you throw a little shade on something, but you know, a lot of people can relate to that. Or, you know, you say something kind of funny and like people comment on it. And so um, I think that people can know that if you come to my VIP, I'm probably gonna have something that's gonna make you laugh or you know, say like, amen sister, like I felt that too. So um, I'm really excited that I finally figured out what it is that I do to add content to people's life. Um, so moving on to what are some of my current struggles? I wrote this list and then I came back to it and realized a lot of these things are my personal life but totally transitions over to business. So really quick tangent. Um, in the past, people have pushed me to do personal development. You really should do it. You could really gain from it. Like you need to grow, you need to whatever. And I'm like, don't tell me how to my, live my life. I'm fine. I got this far on my own, whatever, whatever. Um, and now that I've kind of shifted my mindset and found the things that I like, you know, found podcasts that I like. I can't sit down and read a book, I'll fall asleep. So audiobooks, um, videos, whatever the case is that really resonate with me has changed so much in my life. So um, I'm gonna go down this list and I think, I hope that 
some of you guys can relate. I'm not the only crazy one. Um, okay, so one really big one I had to accept is progress over perfectionism. So like I said, I don't like to fail, but I like to present a good product. Like I expect A's you know, out of my, my grades. When I submit an email, I expect it to be great. I don't hate when there's typos. And if you talk to me ever, you'll see now that like I'm forever messing up everything. So it's for me, it's just like, get it done. Don't care so much about, you know, everything being perfect. Like posting my pictures, like you guys can't see it right now, but like there is a hot mess in this room behind me. Um, but also, you know, like something that I learned when I first started, I was really, really fit, like in shape. I was pretty ripped. And someone told me, you're never going to sell those leggings because you're already in really good shape. And that kind of sucked. Like, you know, you work really hard for what you get to wear every day, you know, in your skin. And for someone to say, I'm not going to buy a product from you because it's not the clothes that make you look that way. And I'm like, absolutely. Like, I'm not perfect. I wasn't perfect. I'm in worse shape now, but I'm certainly happier. Um, so I don't know where I was going with that tangent, but um, I think accepting that not everything has to be perfect, you know, and like not taking the perfect picture, not having the perfect lighting, but lighting does help. Um, you know, having a mess in the background because this is real life. So progress over perfectionism, lacking support from your warm market. Like I said, my family, my friends, a bunch of people fell off. Don't be surprised. Um, it sucks, but especially when you look around and it's like someone doesn't want to buy your product, but they're shopping at Lulu or they just bought the new Kylie kit or they just bought the new like Jordans or something like why them, but not me when you know me and you know where that money's going. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with that and you're so not alone. Um, oh gosh, party hosting and cold messaging. I don't like hates a strong word, but I really don't like it. I have to force myself. Um, I am better at party hosting than I am cold messaging. But when I've shifted my mindset to I'm using this party to create a warm market, I'm not expecting any sales, but sales are really good. Or I'm using this cold message because I just want to plant a seed. I'm expecting this person to say no, but they're going to follow me and they're going to watch me differently. And then maybe in a few months I can convert them to a client and then I can convert them to a party host and then I can bring them into my VIP and maybe make them a rep. So shifting kind of like my intention makes it a little bit easier for me knowing like I'm walking in there expecting to fail. Maybe that's not the right way to phrase it, but that's kind of like how it's better for me um, to kind of accept rejection right off the bat. So um, I've also heard that I should be more type A. I think I would get a lot more things done in life if I could just focus. Like I said, I go off on tangents, I squirrel, I'll find a hundred other things to, to, <laughs> to clean before I like post some of my parties. Um, yeah, if I could be more type A, things would be different, but my boat is floating, so I guess I'm okay. All right, here's a hard one. Feeling worthy of all these blessings that are coming my way. I look at my lifetime volume. I look at my team. Um, I look around me and all my friends at this point, it's two years in now. So my friends are wearing our clothes, but when I keep getting, you know, I keep growing, um, things keep changing in my life. The, the messages that I get, the like random people, Tracy, no, I can't look at you because I'm going to cry. Um, the random messages that I get from people that, um, say the nicest things or like, hey, what you posted really spoke to me. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. The nicest things, um, what you said really spoke to me or uh, I have one more thing, but I'll save it for a little bit later. But just feeling worthy of like, I am no one. But to someone, I'm like everyone, I guess. Um, a lot of people look forward. Gosh, I have an old coworker this weekend who messaged me on Saturday and was like, you guys, or she goes, I, 
I'm sad that it's Saturday. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like, you don't even work with me anymore because you don't like our company. And now it's Saturday. Like, who doesn't like Saturday? And she goes, yeah, but you don't like, you don't post as much on the weekend. And I really look forward to your stories. And I know that you're talking about business, but your motivational stuff is like, like, I feel like I get on there and I kind of like yell at myself with like, hey, stop slacking on this or whatever. But like, really, I think I'm just talking to myself, but hey, people are listening and who knew? And also, P.S. apparently I slack on the weekends and people notice. So, um, but you know, it's like those kinds of things where I'm like, I don't think so highly of myself, but when I look around, it's like, look at all of this. Um, a lot, like my team, they, they, you know, like if you guys are growing teams, they're, they're here because of what you do. Um, and I think that that's huge. And just to like, kind of embrace it all and absorb it. Um, that is crazy. That's, that's crazy. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> something that I still struggle with, I think the general population is still not familiar with our brand. A lot of people have not heard of Zaya. Like nobody heard of Zia. How do you pronounce it? two years ago when we all started, three years ago when we started, that's still happening now. I still call it Zaya, papaya, because it drives me crazy when pr people pronounce it wrong. Um, but just to get people on board, you know, like refining my elevator speech, because when you do like pop-ups and stuff, people only will give you like 15 seconds of their time before they're like, yeah, squirrel going to the next vendor. Um, so I think that's a little bit of a struggle still. And then, Let's see. One page down, guys. <laughs> um, okay, what are some tips that I would give people? So I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna get a little raw, real little raw here. Um, only because I know this and I came from this and this was me, and now I look back and I'm, I have to tell my sponsor, you were right. Um, you have to stay consistent you have to keep showing up um this is this is not a side easy if you're here to make money it's a side hustle this is as i quote jesse lee this is not net chill marketing this is network marketing i think that the business model in itself is like relatively simply like simple once you get it it all clicks but you have to work and it's really frustrating for me when we work so hard to get people on board with us. And then they're like five seconds in and they want to quit because it, they, they've had one day of their launch party and nobody bought anything yet. And I'm like, girl, this is, this is a business. Like you got to put in some work and um, it's going to be hard. So just, I want everyone, you know, if you're new, keep going, don't give up. Everyone struggles. I try to tell my new reps when they hit their first victory, whatever it is, Remember this moment, write it down. You're gonna need this when things get hard and you wanna give up. You're gonna need to come back to this, read it again, remember the way that that felt. Um, there is no such thing as an overnight success. I believe that we have to lay a strong foundation as we build. You, you don't need to wait to know everything about everything before you go, um, but go, go slow, go steady, you know, be the tortoise. Um, you can build and learn at the same time. And remember, like, that's what your sponsor is for. And that's what your sideline is for. Um, you can do both. So don't, don't be like me and try to learn everything and then like get nowhere in six months because you were just trying to master everything. So next, grit. Like I said, you're going to have to work a little bit. I hope everyone's ready. I'm sure if you're on this call, it's because you're here and you're already working. Um, but have some courage. This stuff is scary. I think I still get scared of everything all the time. Um, and tenacity or persistence. You never know who's watching, but someday you will. So whether it's that person who sends you a message that you weren't expecting, or you've been in the business for like, nine months, what, 11 months, and you're at Summit in Salt Lake City, and some woman walks up to you and is like, hey, are you this person on Instagram? And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, why? And she's like, oh my God, I follow you. I love your posts, whatever. And I'm like, I am, again, like, I'm nobody. I'm not a celebrity, but like, that was my one moment where I'm like, oh my God, somebody recognized me. 
<laughs> so anyways, you never know who you're inspiring. So keep showing up. Um, and believe me, I think there's like the people that are, that question what we're doing and don't believe in our success, they're watching. And once they start to believe, oh, yes, like Sharonda is like, yes, girl. <laughs> um, I think that they want to see us succeed low key. Like they're, they're hating from the background, but they want to see us succeed. And when we start to succeed is when they'll start to shop with us and they might even join us. So keep showing up. If for nobody, show up for yourself. And then don't be afraid to ask. If you have questions, I mean, be resourceful. The tools are anywhere and everywhere. But if you have questions, don't spend an hour looking for an answer when you can reach out to somebody and help or ask for help. So ask your sideline, ask your uplines, ask your downlines, ask your sponsor, sponsor, as far as you have to go to get your answers. Um, and then my last two things, you'll never be ready to be a leader. I did not come here for a team. I came here for the discount. And then I was being a good rep, not making any sales. And then we had our Christmas special and I posted it like I was supposed to post because I didn't know what else to post. And somebody freaking signed up with me. That was not a cuss word. Um, somebody signed up with me. And I was like, what do I do now? Like I sent the email, a screenshot of the email to my sponsor. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? And she was like, uh, you better put on your big girl pants because now you have to go be a leader. And so uh, here I am. But with that, my why has changed. So like I said, originally, I just came here for the discount. Worst case scenario, I had never tried the product. I'll guess I'll get a box of stuff. Hopefully it's good. Um, and now what really drives me is to see my girls succeed. And my guys, I have a couple guys on my team. Um, to see all of them succeed. And I believe that pouring myself into them is what really helps me. So if, if, you know, like what is the saying of rising tide lifts all boats or whatever. It's like, if I continue making sure that everybody has what they need to succeed, um, the rest will fall in place naturally for me. And so, oh, I missed something and I really want to go back to it. So as far as you never want to, you're never ready to be a leader, do your best. Cause that's all you can do, right? Is do your best. And it's really important to cultivate a community. So embrace everybody in your group, whether they're there to sell, whether they're just there because they're looking for the community, whether they're desperate for an income, embrace everybody the same, celebrate them the same. Um, and I think that will really, more than just the product itself is what will bind your team together. Um, and my last thing is have fun, have fun with it. Like this is supposed to be fun whether it's your main gig or not, like we should be having fun. If you're not having fun, talk to somebody and let's find a way to make it fun um, and dream big because I am so guilty of saying like, nothing's gonna happen here for me. I'm not going to achieve anything. And then the next thing I know, I'm in Nashville stealing signs out of the trash because I'm not sitting in the back anymore. <laughs> when I go to Summit, I wanna sit in the front with the executives and I was determined and I'm not gonna lie, I put that sign in the trash and was like, not in the trash, but like in a, in the back of my closet, like I'm never going to need this because it's not going to happen for me. And here we are. So <laughs> I guess I should just start dreaming big. Like I'm told to do because crazy, crazy, crazy things will happen. And that's all for me. You are so amazing, Julie. That's awesome. And I have to, um, I just have to say that was, that was one of the main things um, that I wanted to highlight about you, how, how loving you are. Like you're like everybody's cheerleader. Like you, you just love on everybody. You cheer on everybody. You were, you, you just, it just, I don't know. It's like, there's this joy. Like I can't picture you mad or angry or like, like I can't picture you like that. You just, it's contagious and I think um, whether you wanted to succeed or you didn't want it's like it, it just comes natural to you when you are showing that you're enjoying this when you're showing that you're enjoying the process of growth when you're like I, I don't know like you guys see I don't have all the answers I royally mess up all the time but I don't take myself that serious like 
I am 43 years old. I feel like I am, I feel like I am like 10 sometimes and I'm okay with it. Like I am doing the best I can and a little bit better every day. So I think that's definitely key. I love what you said, uh, progress over perfection. I'm a perfectionist, but I've learned with this business that you just got to get things done. If you're waiting for things to be perfect, you're going to miss out on so many opportunities. And then the other thing, you never know who's watching, but one day you will. I actually told you guys um, a little before I started that um, I, was, I, was on a, I was training another team. Somebody from another team, I don't know her. I had no idea who she is. She reached, she's been asking me to train her team. And she said, since I heard your story in Utah, I don't even know when, she said, I, I'm just so inspired by you. So you don't know who's following and you never know where you can serve somebody, whether it benefits your business or not. So um, you just never know who's watching. When people are ready, they will come to you. Keep showing up. Don't take breaks on Saturdays like Julie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but Julie, thank you so much. I'm super proud of you, super proud of your team, the things that you're doing more than anything. Your energy is so contagious. Your passion is just, I'm just so grateful that you're here. Tracy, thank you for following your heart and not letting the little voice scare you from inviting this chica who's not, apparently not Mexican. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but let's introduce now my dear amazing alicia rose she is on facebook whoa what's happening here alicia rose but her name is alicia 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 santa ramo she is amazing she's one of my first few reps and uh she actually came out of nowhere but i'll let her tell you guys how <laughs> she found out about zaya but um i'll tell you guys she is <laughs> I have to say she's the reason she, no, not the reason, but because of her, I realized this was going to be something awesome. And I took a leap of faith and I decided that day that she signed up. I said, I am going to retire from teaching. I'm going to be a full-time Zaya rep. So let, we can just blame anybody who came to the gym and took classes with me, blame her. Okay. <laughs> I, that's why I don't teach anymore. No, I'm kidding. You're all the reason why I don't teach anymore. <laughs> Alicia is also an executive rep. Um, she joined in April of 2018. I joined in February of 2018. She now leads a team of 56 reps. She is awesome. I don't even know how she does everything. She's busy mom. She works. She works. She's like all these things, but she consistently shows up. She's, you guys are just beautiful, but I just love her spirit. Her smile is contagious. I just, I just can't wait for you guys to hear from her. So Alicia, you go. I won't take more of your time. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Paula. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Because I was having some technical issues, so I want to make sure everything's working. I can actually see myself, and now I wish I couldn't see myself again because I'm super freaking nervous all of a sudden, like shaking. I didn't know I could be this nervous over like Zoom. So I apologize. Just bear with me. Julie, that was so good. I love this community and how we can learn so much from each other. So you had so many, so many good points. And I'm so excited. I was able to be on the team call. A lot of times, unfortunately, I miss them because I think it's actually my first Tuesday team call. I've done other things, but so I'm really excited. It was this one and that I got to be a part of it with you. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. When Paula actually messaged me, I was like, hey girl, do you want to be on the team call? I was like, she messaged the wrong person. Like, not really sure. Like, why me? Or like, I'm not that special. And then I told myself to just stop it. Like, cut the crap. Okay. Because that's the exact same negative mindset that I got myself into that caused a stalemate in my business for almost like a full year. Um, so I ain't got no time for that. Nobody's got time for that. So, but more on a little bit about that later. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Alicia Santaramo. It's actually on off. I got married and I haven't changed my last name. So that's why I go by Alicia Rose on Facebook. So I don't have to hear it from my husband. <laughs> um, I am an executive with Zaya Active. Paula is my direct sponsor. And like she said, I joined in April of 2018. So I first came across Facebook or across Zaya on Facebook. One of my friends had posted that she was hosting a party for somebody and she's wearing the really cute black Oso soft hoodie. And I was like, okay. 
one, I want that hoodie and two, what is this and how do I become a part of it? So immediately after I saw her, her post, I didn't join her party. I went to Google and I Googled diet active. And I found the website, read a little bit about the reviews and the company values. And I thought, wow, like, where has this been all my life? I knew it was a new company. I was so excited to be on the um, ground floor of something brand new. So I went to the Zia Active page and I clicked join, I filled out all my information. After about 10 minutes, nobody replied to me and I'm super impatient. So it's like, well, that's not acceptable. I need to join today. So I went onto Facebook and I typed in Zaya. And Paula had done a party for my friend Jill and the party actually popped up in like my, in the related post because we had mutual friends. So I like creeped into her DMs and was like, hey, I want to join your team. <laughs> and I think I kind of threw her off because she was like, okay, hold up a second. Like, hi. Because <laughs> um, I don't think many people do that because if they did, that would be amazing. I would love to see plenty of messages like that in my inbox, but we don't. Um, basically we chatted for like an hour kind of back and forth and I signed up like never touching the product never having it in my hands but I was just so passionate about it and what I had a feeling this company could become and look at it now so I'm really really glad that I took that leap of faith that it was Paula that I connected with because she obviously we all love Paula she's been so motivating kept me you know I went through a rough time which I'll talk about a little bit and she's always there for me to just check in with me see how I'm doing even if I wasn't being super active in my business um, and that's so incredibly appreciative. So when I started off, um, I started off pretty strong. Like I had a good VIP group. I was having a lot of parties. My sales were great. I went to the mini summit in Chicago. And then I went to the summit in Utah where I actually got engaged to my now husband. He proposed um, at summit that year. I earned the Bahamas cruise that October. Um, and for me, the most important thing was that I finally felt accepted by a team. I had been part of other um, direct sales or, you know, like beach body, no offense to them. I just never was like, I never felt accepted. I always kind of felt like I was on the outskirts. I didn't really feel like anyone really cared. I was just a number to them. And this company has a hundred, hundred percent changed that for me. Um, so I was really motivated shortly after the cruise, I started kind of doing my wedding planning and any of you know, like that are married, it just kind of consumes you. You're like so excited about things. And like, that's all I did all the time when I wasn't working was wedding planning. We did a destination wedding. So it was like a lot of looking up hotels and I just got really consumed with it. And my business kind of, you know, took a little bit of a backseat. And I just told myself like, once the wedding's done, I'll get back into it. I was still going through the motions, posting, you know, the new releases, um, that kind of thing. But I wasn't actually like actively participating in my business. And then I don't know if this is a thing or if it's just a me thing, but like after the wedding was done, I just kind of got into like a deep depression. I don't know if it was because I was like, the one thing I had been looking for for so long was gone. And it was not about the wedding. I was happy. I loved my husband. I was happy to be married, but I think I had just put so much effort into it. It was gone. And now what am I going to do with myself? And instead of putting that into my business, I became a little bit depressed. Um, I just didn't, you know, I didn't really like myself anymore. I didn't like my reflection. I had gained some weight. I guess when you get married, you get comfortable and you, you know, you enjoy yourself a little bit. You have a bunch of wine and you eat some food. And I just, I did not like myself. So I didn't want to take pictures of myself in the clothes. I didn't want to post pictures of myself. And I just kind of felt really uncomfortable in my own skin. I tried to blame Zaya, which is really embarrassing to say, but I did. I was like, oh, things are out of stock or, oh, the return process is messed up. Just any, any reason that I could use to make myself feel better about quitting I blamed it on the business. I was like, oh, it's, well, I can't be a part of this company and blah, blah, blah. I knew deep down that they were a great company. It was a hundred percent, not them and a hundred percent me. Um, but you know, I told myself I can be successful doing other things. I've been successful in network marketing. So I thought I'm going to sell makeup. Okay, great idea. And then I'm going to sell ketones. Great idea. Well, guess what? Surprise, surprise. Neither of those businesses was successful either. And it was because I needed to work on me first and foremost, before I could give anything back to anyone else or a company. Um, so it really forced me to take like a long, hard look at myself. And I came to the hard realization that, you know, nothing would succeed until I changed myself and I changed my mindset. So I went from barely a director team each month. I mean, a lot of months I didn't even requalify. I think we had like eight people on my team um, to hitting executive. Like Paula said, we've got 56 people on our team now. 
we were only, we are less than like right about 15,000 short of SIA executive last month. So that was exciting, um, really motivating. Um, and the best part of it all is like, we have our own team page now, we have our own community, we support each other. Um, and this whole big change mostly has really occurred since I would say like February of this year. So it really showed me like, okay, as long as you change your mindset, um, it, it really makes the world of a difference in your business. And one thing that really struck a chord with me is somebody told me, um, why is it that you're so willing to give your all into a job that you work for for someone else, but you won't give your all into a job that you could work for yourself? And I really kind of, it just stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, what a good question. Why do I work 45 to 50 hours a week for another person? And here I am with this amazing opportunity at my finger. Um, at my fingertips and I'm just letting it completely slip away. So I was like, okay, I got to reevaluate some things here. <laughs> um, it's clearly was not the business opportunity because there were so many other people out there being successful and talk about regret, talk about all the lost time where now I've got friends that I had talked to or sold things to that became reps with other people. You know, I can't go back and change it, but I can definitely learn from it. Um, and I also told myself, you know, if I keep treating it like a hobby, it would only ever pay me like a hobby. So if I wanted to be serious about this business and have it pay me like a business, I needed to actually treat it like one and give it the attention that it deserved. Um, so I want to share, I want to share with you guys the four things that you could do today to start being more successful in your business and make a shift like I did. Um, and I did kind of pinpoint it to four things that like really stuck out to me. Um, the first one was changing your mindset, which I already mentioned that I did, but I kept asking myself, like, how am I going to lead a team when I didn't even like me? How am I going to make people want to be like me or join my team? And I started small. I started, you know, interacting with my team more, apologizing for my absence because I truly felt awful that there was a lot of times where I wasn't present, you know, and they didn't have a true leader. And I had some girls that were making amazing successes and thankful to Paula because she reached out to me and was like, Hey, you know, you should really give a shout out to people on your team. They're doing well. And I, I knew that. Um, I think I was just very ashamed because I had let myself kind of fall into that spiral. Um, I started, you know, reading some personal development, kind of like Julie said, things that spoke to me though. I didn't really go off of what other people said I should read. I read things that spoke to me and would help me. Um, and there are some really great books out there. So I'm really glad I at least looked into that. I started eating better, improving my health. I bought a Peloton um, to work out a little bit more, which I promise will happen again soon. Um, and I started to tell myself like I am enough and stop doubting every little thing that I did. I know that I do have a lot to offer and you know, I can't change the past, but going forward, I told myself I was gonna be a hell of an upline to my girls. And I really feel like, I know that they've seen the shift and I've seen the shift in our team since I actually decided like, Okay, I might not be a natural born leader, but I'm, I'm gonna take the reins, I'm gonna lead this team. Um, secondly, I got a business partner. So truth be told, she's always, she was always there. Um, and it's not like we said, hey, let's be partners. Like, we've just always kind of been there for each other. Um, good times, bad times, help through business issues, you know, supporting each other, successes, whatever. Honestly, she's the reason I'm still here and a part of Zaya. Um, so I don't know if she's watching, but thank you to Teresa for just being my sounding board and always kind of making me realize that I have what it takes to be the leader that I am now. Um, I couldn't have done it without her. Um, to me, having a business partner is a game changer. So um, I highly recommend if you can find somebody either in your downline or even another rep with Zaya to just kind of connect with and bounce ideas off with um, and hold each other accountable. So the reason I say that is because they get it. They understand the frustrations. They understand the excitement about Wednesdays. Like my husband will never understand like why I'm so excited about a Wednesday launch day, but your business partner will get it or your friend will get it. Um, and as much as your husband or your boyfriend, or your friends might listen, having somebody who's actually in the business there for you um, really does help. And you can have more than one business partner, but just having somebody there for you that you can just be completely yourself with has really made a huge change for me. And I think third, I started to hold myself accountable. So I stopped pointing fingers. I stopped making excuses. I stopped blaming everyone and everything for my failures. 
I was completely responsible for my successes and equally as responsible for my failures. Um, that's a really hard pill to swallow sometimes because you're like, wow, I really was standing in my own way. You know, I thought maybe for a while I was just being a crit being critical of myself, but no, I really truly was uh, standing in my own way. And it's really frustrating to kind of think back on now, like where I could be if I had just really stuck with this, but we can't change the past. And I, I think we've got a really bright future. Um, you know, also obviously leading by example and putting in the work. I can't expect my team to book parties, you know, put in the work, work on recruiting if I'm not doing it myself. So I always make sure that, you know, we're talking with each other. We discuss our goals, that kind of thing to make sure everybody's on the same page and everybody is working together towards the common goal. And lastly, and this one is, I was an excuse of mine for a long time was to make the time. So I would always say I didn't have time. So just like Julie, I'm actually a woman in construction as well. I um, just accepted a promotion for assistant service manager and lead dispatcher for a plumbing and fire protection company that does about $10 million a year. So I'm really busy. <laughs> it's, and I, I totally get it. It's, some days you're just like, oh my God, I cannot keep up with things. So I am busy and it's really hard for me at a time. So I pee and post. Anybody else get that? You run to the bathroom and you, you, you post while you're going to the bathroom because that's about the only time I can get away from my phone long enough or away from my texts or meetings to actually post. But I have to post during the day, especially when I have a party going on or hello Wednesdays. I swear to God that my office probably thinks I have like IBS or a gastrointestinal issue because I'm in the bathroom for a long time. Not the, not the case, but they don't need to know. Um, and I'm fine with them thinking that because it's important to me that I get that out there. Um, and I think those, so those are the main four things. Again, if you wanted to write those down, it's just change your mindset, get a business partner, hold yourself accountable and make the time combined with all the things that Julie said, like, I'm like, I got so much from this call tonight. So I hope that you all did as well. Um, Thank you, Paula, for inviting me and thank all of you beautiful ladies. And I've seen a few men on there for joining as well. I hope you had fun. <laughs> you guys are like, I'm like, who are these amazing humans? This is so good. Those four points, I'm not even gonna repeat them. Alicia just repeated them. It's so good. Julie, you're, you made some incredible um, points too. It's it's so crazy and and just to put a bow on this amazingness is we complicate things you guys we complicate things it's insane like we constantly have to go back and think why am i making this so complicated it's not that complicated we we tend to like find ways to to get creative when we if we just stick to the basics and the simple activities and we do it over and over and over and over, that's where the magic happens. It's like a recipe for a cake. If we change it and like, oh no, you know what? Let me add a little extra egg. You completely ruin it. So don't, don't get too crazy. Don't overthink it. Just focus on what you're saying. And um, from what I see here, and I feel like it's something that we, I think the majority of us can relate, that feeling of, um, I'm not capable, right? I don't know if you guys relate to that. I think it's like a common thing that we hear is I'm not capable, I'm not worthy, I, I'm just gonna quit. And um, if we show up knowing that we all feel the same way, nobody's out there judging you, we're all living like our own little in our own little world and we're all trying to be better every day and we if we continue to help each other and support each other magical things happen so keep showing up guys focus on growing yourself focusing on those activities i love you guys so much i love what you shared thank you alicia you were amazing and i'm so glad that you uh, me and not you you shared it so um i think i'm just gonna go back to it i'm so glad that you allowed yourself the opportunity to come back and say you know what this is my place and um, that you put that shame or whatever on the side and you said you know what this is it i'm going for it um things happen when they need to happen so 
whatever it is that you're struggling with right now, it's part of the growth and it's part of the journey. So embrace it, deal with it and keep going. So thank you guys so much. I will post the recording once it's uploaded on YouTube. Hi, Lori. I just see you there. Uh, do you guys want to take another picture? I don't know. I see like screens popping up. So I'm like, are we doing a picture? Cause I'm not ready. <laughs> you think I don't see it. I'm like, I'm like, why are you all showing me your teeth? Like what's that? Like, how? <laughs> you guys are funny. Share the pictures when you can. I'll steal some. <laughs> Hannah. Bye, Hannah. <laughs> Bye guys. Have a great night. Love you. Bye. Uh